Good afternoon. My name is Elena Shepard, and welcome back to Build. We are here today speaking with Miss USA, Kyra McCullough, with the next Miss USA set to be crowned in a few weeks. Kyra's tenure is almost up, but we're going to talk to her about the year she's had, her day job as a scientist, super casual, and her STEM-focused community outreach program. Before we welcome Kyra to this Build stage, let's take a look at a clip. Miss USA 2017 is District of Columbia! That is such an amazing moment. I mean, I've, I'm not Miss USA, and I've watched that clip 400 times in the last like three days. Take us back to that moment. What were you thinking and feeling? So in that moment where I was standing actually from top three, I remember looking up at my mom and my brother and my dad and, and like going, yo, we got this. And then my brother pointed at me like, like you the chosen one. And then, um, and, you know, I was like really happy then. And then I was in top two. I, I dropped my head and I prayed and like the biggest teardrop rolled down my face. Like you can see it like if you like go to YouTube and like just fell down my face. And I know like all my fears and everything was just like washing away in there. But I was just so thankful to, to be at that moment, to be at that spot, because I didn't really expect it more so. But I, I told myself, have fun throughout the entire process. Like, make everlasting friendships and know that life does not end here, but begins. That's amazing. Thanks. And, um, I mean, a year ago, right this second, I'm sure you were preparing. This happened, I think it was May 13th or something last year. Um, what were you most nervous about going into the competition? So for starters, I mean, I come from a government background. I was, you know, working the cubicle. I've always been like in a laboratory and I was most nervous about having to, to be vulnerable to the world with, with my, my life, everything that I do um, through my Instagram and everything. So I even had like the dumbest Instagram name. It was like PS love Katie underscore and an imposter page made a Kyra McCullough account. And got 122,000 followers. So private Kyra missed out on all her followers. But um, I, it's been a learning process this entire year. And I'm thankful for it. Like, I've grown so much. And I'm actually enjoying engaging with, you know, followers and people that I follow through social media. Like, I even did a um, Instagram Live with Damon, jo Damon John the other day, Shark Tank. So... Hello, like way to way to expose yourself and be vulnerable to your feelings. Your yeah, social media fear. Um, how does it feel to be coming to the end of this year? What what emotions are you feeling about you know leaving? Well, her her incredible crown is sitting right there. If we haven't noticed it yet, but to be leaving that to somebody else, it's bittersweet. I I mean I took the chance. I took a leap, and I've I've been indulged into an opportunity of a lifetime. I am happy for what's coming next though. So my science program, Science Exploration for Kids, we're taking it actually throughout the nation. So we have a few satellite workshops. I also have like after school programs in the Montgomery County area as well as DC and Arlington set up and a few summer camps too. So in like speaking engagements, like the list goes on. So I, being Miss USA was this ultimate platform, but you know, we can't hold on to just that like we have to know like I said this was the beginning this is now the opportunity for you to be catapulted into everything that you've always wanted to do so to the next girl that's going to have it you know I don't want you to have my crown because I'm selfish <laughs> but but I'm going to give it up to the next girl because it's all about the sisterhood and you know and building on this legacy that we have um I really want to talk about all this these these initiatives you're doing but before we do that you posted something recently on Instagram which I thought was Speaking of Instagram, but I thought this was really powerful, um, and I wanted to read it. Um, she wrote, 
I honestly lost myself halfway through my reign trying to compromise what everyone expected of a Miss USA. To be honest, I was apprehensive to admit this childish identity crisis to you all, but just in case I'm not the only one, I'm sending a reminder to all the young girls and women around the world, never allow internet trolls to make you feel less than what you are. Be yourself every step of the way, and don't be afraid to express your true style, because being true is how you connect best with others. I mean, honestly, wow. Vote on a billboard. No. <laughs> we should. You, yeah. First of all, it's not a childish identity crisis. I think that's like a really brave human thing to say. Um, and I just wanted to ask, you know, what, what you meant. How did you lose yourself? What, what weight were you feeling? And how did you get back to where you wanted to be? Wow. The weight that was on my shoulders literally from the moment that my name, my state was even called at the pageant. Well, it's, you know, was, it, made, it, was, it was a lot. Um, like I said, I come from a government background and I never really had expertise on modeling. I never really put myself in front of a camera a lot. I've always been very keen to public speaking, but I knew in this moment I had to change a lot about myself. And But then I realized, I was like, okay, I'm changing too much to compromise with fans and everything. And I did lose myself. I was, you know, told so many times on the internet through through comments, oh, she's not sexy enough, she doesn't represent the Miss USA organization, all, all we hear about her is being a scientist, and I'm like, you're right, I am probably not sexy enough, you know, coming from, like, my predecessors, but it's a learning opportunity, and not to say that I don't appreciate the women that, that are confident in their skin, it took a while for me to learn that, and you're right, I will beat the dead horse to let you know that I am a scientist, and I stand for STEM education for so many children around the world, and I advocate, promote, plan events on behalf of, of, of the legacy that I want to leave, leave. And um, when I realized that I had to be vulnerable, like I said, to my feelings, to my fans, now I'm realizing I'm connecting more with everyone. I just saw a comment like two seconds ago when I posted a photo and it said, I'm loving your recent post. More of your personality is coming out. And I'm like, thanks, but why did it take me 320-something days to learn how to be Miss USA? But um, to the next girl or anyone in this room or anyone listening, if you know you feel like you're compromising your identity to to fit some status quo or be put into a box, remember and wake up every morning telling yourself that you are limitless, you are a trendsetter, and people want to be a part of your life. So make them understand what it is that you advocate for, what you're trying to break the molds in. These glass ceilings were meant to be broken. I mean, I, if I think that deserves a round of applause. That <laughs> if is. we're all, if <laughs> if everyone thinks the same in a room, you're in the wrong room. Or be that one that challenges everything. Amen to that. <laughs> um, you, so we've talked a bit about science. To, to a lay person like me, you know, science and pageants feel like two very different worlds. So how did you get, how did you get into pageants and how did you get into science? I've secretly always wanted to compete in pageants. I actually was signed up to do a system when I was like 10 years old. But then when I went through and saw the sponsorship fees and calculated like a gown and everything, I told my mom, like, I don't want to do it because it just costs too much. And, and for some reason, I was such a conscious child of, you know, financial awareness. But I played basketball throughout high school and I love chemistry, like with all my heart. Like I love everything about math and science. So I was always tutoring friends and peers. I was at basketball practice to get my homework done before. So I foc you know, I focused in a different area, but there was always the secret side of me that wanted to do it. But yet and still, I had so much fear in my heart to put myself on that stage in front of other people and step out of my comfort zone. So when I decided to compete for Miss, well, the Miss DC USA title, I was actually at work at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and I caught myself just going to work and going home and, and in this, this, this awful cyclical motion of, of not really doing much else. So I wrote down everything that I knew that I wanted to do and I was like, I'm no longer living with the what if factor. Because if you continue to do that, you're never going to pursue what you want. And sometimes I kind of listen to other people telling me, oh, it's nothing. You shouldn't do it. It's not going to get you wearing in life. But that's off of the, pre the precedent that they've seen. So when I went out and, you know, faced my fears and did what I wanted to do and had the financial assets to do that for myself, I told myself I can no longer live with the what if. And I meshed science and pageantry. And now we're here. And I'm inspiring so many girls around the world to fall in love with science and be those um, tech leaders that are changing the way everything works in this world. 
How did your colleagues at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission respond to you being wanting to do pageants? They were so supportive. I probably came back to literally 3,000 emails. <laughs> so I had to kind of do like a show up to say thank you to everyone. But it's, it's so surprising to me that they were so supportive. And I'm forever going to be grateful for that. And um, I, I loved working at the NRC. I really did. It was my first career out of college. And I learned so much about awesome leadership from top to bottom, interacting with peers, understanding um, that rotational opportunities within your agency is important because you want to make sure you have depth and breadth and what it is that you're that you're you know advocating for or you're studying. So like the NRC just gave me so much resource and I've utilized it even as Miss USA. So I'm um, hoping to take some more of those ideas and put them in a book one day and I'll you know give it out. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, I like that idea. Um, I also want to talk about your program science exploration for kids. When did you found that? Can you tell us a little about what it is? All right, so uh, science exploration for kids was originally self-funded and I started it when I was in college, so 2012. And what I would do is I would go into the Orangeburg local elementary schools, this is Orangeburg, South Carolina, and I would do after school like fun, hands-on science experiments, but then I would make it relatable to something that they were doing in class to follow the curriculum. And also something they do every day at home, like wash dishes. So we break it down by using everyday techniques and to make it relatable and make science understandable. But Science Exploration for Kids is a program that um, helps students of all backgrounds. And we just try to encourage students, and especially our young girls, to fall in love with the math and sciences. So we're creating this pipeline and, and hopefully you know, pushing more students to pursue these careers because the scholarships are available. And we need this generation to be, to be more adept in these areas. And also, there is still a huge gender and racial gap in, in the tech and science world. And I talked to a few people at Microsoft about this the other day. So uh, we'll be putting some stuff together because um, at the top, you know, and even traditionally how people look at scientists, it's, it's typically a certain type of person. So I am here as that person to change that mold. You know, I love you, Bill Nye, but we got to work <laughs> together. <laughs> and this picture, I think, is from a, a recent day-long workshop you did, right? Yeah. And what, how was it? Had, did the kids have fun? I received so much response and positive response from this event. So this event was called Take Flight with SC4K and Miss USA and actually had the Ronald Reagan Airport in Washington, D.C. So you could see the planes taking off, but it also was fitting into the tech and science area. I told myself in December I need to have an event, and I literally put boots to the ground, pins of paper, phone to my ear, and I raised $35,000 in one month for this event, and I've never done that, ever in my life. Like, I planned and executed, and I put myself out there to the world, and I, I said, you know what, the least they can say is no, and I had a few no's, but I had many yeses, and that's something I'm proud of, and a quote that I live by is actually, nothing in this world can take the place of persistence, and I was a professional persistent pest to make sure that this event was actually going to come to fruition, and I'm so thankful for every supporter that came out. My homegirl, Hannah Stocking, she's also a scientist, so she has like crazy YouTube videos. I love it. So she came out to support as well. And um, again, thank you to every sponsor, every local brand, every student that came through, every mom. It meant the world to me, and we're going to have another one. So I'm going to make it annual from here on out. Um, and how, how has your organization grown since you've been Miss USA? Tremendously, because now I feel like I have a solid plan. I, like I said, worked in the government. So typically I would, you know, all my hours would just go to my job. And I would listen to people like Gary Vee. And he, he tells you over and over, like, like you know, you want to you get it. You want to be an entrepreneur. Well, you can't do that without money. So you need to work your, your regular job, save as much as you can, and then move on from there. So, you know, Miss USA kind of gave me the opportunity where I, I, I hustled as Miss USA. I, I stood for the ambassador for the program. But it was also like, Kyra, this is your opportunity to use your platform to leverage your voice and the things that you're passionate about. And, and that's why you know, I was able to put it all together. So I'm thankful for that. It's amazing. Um, another, another topic that it seems you're very passionate about is, is women. And you uh, recently hosted the first annual Women in Power event at the Chelsea Film Festival. Um, the topic of that event was asking women how they made it to the top. So I wanted to ask you, how did you make it to the top? Ooh, how did I make it to the top? Well, there is no one answer for that. There's a huge <laughs> litany of answers. But I would say, you know what? I can't even answer that because I'm not at the top, in my opinion. But 
the the progression to get to the top, like I said, has been being persistent, has been being a, a devout woman of God, has been um, someone that's that's cast out all fears and doubt of herself because she had an imposter syndrome for whatever reason growing up and said that you have to be limitless because people are only going to invest in you what you invest into yourself. So if you invest, you know, hours into your brand, hours into knowing who you are, other people are going to do that and follow suit. So that's what I would say um, I'm using to get to the top because um, I just have so much I expect of myself. I like there's just so much in this world that I want to accomplish, so many people that I want to touch and, you know, and, and build my program and really make sure that the whole world knows what science exploration for kids is and not just Kyra McCullough, Miss USA 2017. <laughs> um, I, you've, you've answered this sort of just in the example of you and your life, but what do you, what do you think is the role of, of pageants and Miss USA in, in 2018? In 2018, no, the role of pageants actually is it's still the same as it's always been. It's an opportunity for women of all walks of life to come together into a sisterhood. It's opportunity of a lifetime for that one woman that holds this ambassador position to share with the world um, what confidence looks like, how she, how she exudes that through her philanthropy or through her voice, however possible. And it also teaches women to be present no matter where you go. So um, one thing my mom always did growing up was talk to everybody. And I never understood it, and it used to embarrass me because my friend's moms would walk in and just, you know, sit down and not speak to them. I'm like, but my mom would walk in this room and hug each and every one of you and say hello. But then it was something that I, I inherently learned. You have to command attention no matter where you go. And you need to make sure that when you have that 15 seconds to get your pitch out, it's concise, it's succinct, and people are clear on what you're trying to say. So that's what Miss USA and pageants still play a role in, giving women that opportunity to leverage their platforms to be to be great leaders to be succinct speakers and and to be just women of an amazing organization that represent um, literally globally um, last year during the pageant you were asked if you were a feminist and you said you were an equalist and I wanted to ask if you could you know tell us what that means to you and if you would answer the same way were you asked that again this year sure so um, one thing I will say I've learned throughout my reign as Miss USA is you have to always stand behind what you say. So to answer your question, yes, I would still answer that the same. Um, I think the, the word feminism now maybe has been misconstrued in my eyes, but you know, that's no, it doesn't mean that we all have to battle each other when it comes to that word, because I still stand for women's rights. If you listen to the entire answer, you would know that a lot of my leaders at the agency that I work for were women, and because women in power I'm trying to tell you, like, the safety culture of the office changes. The morale office changes. Everything about that. So um, that question was, whew, it was, it was a big softball, okay? Because I'm like, some of these questions are soft now. But, but I'm glad, you know, I was the one to answer that. And, um, and to clarify on anything, I, like I said, I'm, I'm always here to support women. And I'm here to actually open up healthy discussions and dialogues. I believe that's what my answers on stage actually created for so many people around the world. Um, if, like I say, if we're all thinking the same, there's a problem. Absolutely. And um, so the women competing this year, what advice do you have for them? And have they have they asked you for your advice? Can can you talk to them about that stuff? Or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so I'm I'm an open book. I I believe in always lifting as you climb. Mm -hmm. And of course, I want it to be an amazing competition. And I want the excuse me. I know the right woman is going to win. So the advice I have for anyone competing or even the women in the pageant. Um, it's so simple, and I know you know the answers to these already. You have to be yourself. Like, I cannot stress that enough. And do what makes you comfortable. There's going to be so many people in your ear telling you, don't wear that dress, you shouldn't wear this color. But if your face lights up like a disco ball, your energy is going to be seen through that. And additionally, don't be afraid to unleash all your fuego on stage <laughs> because that is your one opportunity. You know, that's, I call it a Polaroid moment. Because after that one shot, that's your last shot, that's it. That is your Polaroid moment. So take a hold of that and go out there and have fun. Just, just, just be this vibrant, bubbly woman that, that represents so many women in this world. And, and just have fun with it. You definitely brought the fuego. You were, you know, twirling on stage wearing these ball gowns. How, how do you twirl in a... Are you a dancer? 
<laughs> no, but I've always wanted to be, but I <laughs> suck at dancing. It's terrible. I still want to be one, but I will talk about that later. So <laughs> um, how I twirl on stage is so crazy. I actually have been wearing like heels like my whole entire life. So, you know, I was always tall, but my mom would buy me these like mud boots. Do you remember mud boots? Yes. You know, <laughs> those were amazing. Who else remembers mud boots? They're amazing. Okay, so... Um, like a really thick heel and like a little platform, but they were like fly boots. Like every girl had them. So I always worn some form of a heel, but I've always been athletic as well. So my lower body strength is the strongest. Like I, I could only do like two pull-ups. So, but, um, we're working on that one. Don't worry. <laughs> but, um, but the, the strength really comes in through your hips and your, your calves. Like you have to have that strength in there. So toe raises, 25 toe raises on, um, each leg at least every night and then do them together. So, you know, that's to get the core strength in there. And then, like, practicing is important, but you make sure your legs have to be strong. And also, I did a lot of hair shows when I was, like, in high school. Do you know what those are? What are hair shows? Yeah, it's, like, something big, like, in the urban communities. Like, literally, people getting together just to have a whole bunch of fashion show fun and, and do hair. But I, my hair has never been done in a hair show. I just went out there to walk and have fun and wear, like, funny outfits. <laughs> um, but people go crazy. Like, Google, like, you know, like, Bonner Brothers, like, hair shows or something. It's the most theatrical fashion show you'll ever see but there's so much energy in there and people will like look at the camera and then do a whole twirl and come back but they're having so much fun and that's what I always loved doing growing up so a lot of my practice and references and strength has come through those things and playing basketball I love that <laughs> um, I have one more question and then we're going to take it to the audience but your first day without the crown what are you excited to do Ooh, well, I think I have like chronic fatigue because I cannot fall asleep to save my life. But I am actually looking forward to just indulging maybe in some um, oh, gumbo because I'm going to be in Dallas for a few days. What's the name of that restaurant out there? Oh, you're looking at a New Yorker for life. So <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Oh, it, I just had a brain fart. No worries. But they have the <laughs> best, like, gumbo, so I'm going to get, like, a big bowl of that. And I'm just looking forward to just doing the things that Kyra really loves to do, which is wearing, like, um, bohemian chic clothes. Like, I love baggy jeans and, like, tank tops. And I'm looking forward to doing that and also going back home to my see my parents in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and bringing a few sheets out to the beach, a cooler packed with some, you know, cut-up pineapples and and maybe some some chicken from the house or something, and just like laying out and solace and just relaxing, you know. Like I, I'm looking forward to just kind of like getting back to like a regular life for like one day with no worries. And I'm gonna you know pull up my old Jeep, open up the sunroof, roll down the windows. I'm gonna blast Drake's "Care for What" <laughs> <laughs> on 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 as loud as it can get. Well, within the decibels of Virginia Beach systems, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> and the song is "Nice for What." My bad, but either way, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> You're going to have a great summer. Yeah. Um, let's take it to the audience. Okay. Hi. Hey. It's, it's nice to see you again. Before I get to my quest, I wanted to say you look absolutely stunning today. Thank you. Thank and you. You're welcome. I wanted to know, uh, since you've got this platform of being Miss USA, how has that helped you accomplish most of the goals that you set out to do? So Miss USA comes with a lot of weight, and that's something I actually discovered throughout the year. At, like I said, at first I was apprehensive, like, oh, no one cares about you know, pageants, no one cares about Miss USA, but I had to come back and realize to myself that this is an amazing title, and so many women around the world want this title, and it's held at a high regard and esteem, so um, when I go into places, I'm, I'm not, um, I'm not pompous at all, I'm not like, oh, I Miss USA, I'm here, but I have casual conversations with people first, you know, get to know them first, and it's usually people in power, and then they say, oh, what do you do, and I'm like, well, before I did this, but I'm on a, a year stint as Miss USA. And they're like, oh, and then the conversation changes from there. So I've been able to meet so many people in power and leverage that title in that case. Like I said, I, I, I've met Kevin O'Leary. I'm working with some of Mark Cuban's people. I um, met Damon John. I mean, like, you know, talked to him on, on Instagram Live the other day. I, you know, I had major donor support and, and they said like, you're doing the right thing with your title. And that's actually what verbatim what Kevin O'Leary said to me. He says, um, what you're doing is important and you're using your title for the right thing. So it comes with a weight and um, I put it on my back and I climbed up every tower I could with it. Next question. Hi. Hey. If you could change one or two things about the competition, what would it be? Let's see. One or Okay, I got a good one for you. One thing would be that there's no more and I reign forever. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, the competition is it's great. It's perfect. I can't even say there's one thing I'd want to change about it. If anything, 
um, I would love to enjoy it longer. You know, you're meeting girls from all over the world, all over the country, and it's an opportunity to really come together because I've never hung out with so many girls at one time, and I had the best time of my life. Like, there's nothing better than girlfriends, to be honest. So spades, nights, Monopoly, sorry, who knows? Like, we can play that all night long and play in dresses and makeup and gossip if we want to. But the pageant's amazing, and so is the Miss Universe organization. So there's truly nothing that I would change about it but maybe making my stint longer. <laughs> <laughs> Kyra, thank you so much for joining oh, us really? today. Okay. And thank you for all you're doing. You're doing incredible work. Thank so. you. I had so much fun. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs>